thanks for coming to RV Squared. I'm Steve Vance. This video is gonna walk you through the processes of checking your motorhome's transmission. In this case, this is a 2015 Newell with the Allison transmission, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step what it takes to come to your storage unit and check the fluid levels. Additionally, we're gonna go up to the cab and we're gonna show you that on the console for the Allison transmission, it has a diagnostics mode that will enable you to check your oil levels right from the driver's seat. So here we go. If you don't already have it, it's a little bit hard to find, but you can Google your transmissions model. In this case, I have Googled an Allison transmission. It happens to be a Model 4000. This is the original manufacturer's manual. It is dated back quite a few years. I think this is a 2009 version, but they haven't modified the procedure that I'm going to show you that much. There are a few minor differences in transmission models, so just make sure that you're double checking to make sure that you're looking at the exact information pertaining to your model of your transmission. What I'm gonna do first is a, called a cold check, and that's to assure that you're not gonna take your motorhome out and start running it around when your transmission levels are either too high or too low. Both can damage your transmission when you start driving it of any distance. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to your motorhome and you're gonna check what's called a cold level. Now that's generally between 60 and 120 degrees. So right now, a nice warm day, I don't have to do anything other than a cold start, check it, and then we'll let it warm up. As always, before I start, I've done a quick check around. I've made sure that I haven't forgotten to take anything out of the engine bay, or I check my plugs, my chargers, the bay doors. I don't want to get distracted and suddenly have a problem. But the first thing is, when you do a cold check, you're going to be on level ground. So in this case, in an RV storage, we're, on, we're in good shape because we're already on level ground. What we're going to do then is I'm going to go up to the front and I'm going to start it I'm going to let it idle for about one minute. Once I've let it idle for about one minute, I'm going to shift between reverse and drive just to circulate the fluids and I'm going to let it idle again for a minute. Meantime, I'm going to walk back here and get ready to check my fluids. Fluids, when you're checking the transmission, need to be with the engine running. That's exactly opposite of engine oil, which should be checked when the engine is stopped. So now let's walk inside the cab and on the Allison control panel, there's a diagnostic mode. The diagnostic mode is accessed by pressing both the down and the upward arrow at the same time and hold it. When you enter the diagnostic mode, if you see anything other than OL with a OK to follow or perhaps an L2 or L3, which would indicate that you have got low fluid, in this case, the TL is telling me that the temperature is too low. So the fact is, I walked in here after it's been idling for five minutes, and indeed the transmission temperature is too low to do this readout. The hot temperature readout that's in the control panel has to be within 140 and 220 degrees. So in order to use the diagnostics mode in the cab on the Allison panel, your transmission temperature has to be between 140 and 220 degrees. And you can see the trans temperature right now is 96 degrees. So we've got a ways to go. 
When you do the cycling between reverse and neutral, you have to pay attention to how your particular coach is programmed. This particular newel is programmed so that if we push reverse or neutral, any drive gear, it's locked out in neutral because the air brake is still applied. So the way we have to cycle between reverse and drive to get the fluids to circulate is we have to remove the brake and apply the service brake and then we can actually place it in reverse, drive, and back to neutral. And it goes without saying, but make sure you reapply the parking brake. Okay, so you can see that I was a little bit low on fluid, probably two quarts worth. So I'm gonna let you know a little secret. There's a right way and a wrong way. The right way is to go grab a nice little beaker from your kitchen supplies plastic is preferred and that way you can make a nice neat job out of pouring a little bit of fluid into your trans the wrong way is to go up and get a nice little plastic measuring beaker from your household supplies and use that for your transmission fluid that said i happen to have a funnel it's not the easiest thing to do, but I'm very thankful that Newell has given me plenty of room to work around the transmission fluid port so I can get in there and hopefully not make too big of a mess. But just in case, I've got a nice big terry cloth towel to mop up any problems. Take the dipstick out. Make sure you put your dipstick someplace where it's not going to get super dirty. Also, make sure you wipe this port to make sure there's no residual dirt and grime on there. And then the rest is just a matter of balance. This is synthetic Delvac ATF, and we're just going to, and that's why you have your drop cloth. Okay, so I got about two quarts in there. That should top it off just fine. We're still in the cold level, so I'm going to go in and start the rig, cycle it between reverse drive, let it idle for a minute, come back, and we're going to do a follow-up fluid check. With the engine and the transmission warmed up adequately, we're ready to do a hot check using the Allison pad in the driver's seat. So let's check it out. Once again, to enter the mode for diagnostics, you're going to hold the up and down arrows simultaneously, and you're going to watch the display immediately go into the oil level mode. It will cycle between the reading of oil level and a reading of whether it's OK or L1 for one quart down L2, two quarts down, which mine read earlier, L2. That's how I knew to put two quarts in. Now, to go into the second part of the diagnostic mode, you toggle the up and down arrow again at the same time, and you enter the oil monitor life. This is the oil monitor life, and, it's sh and it reads from 99 down to zero. It's 86%. The third press will bring you to the filter life monitor, indicated by FM, and it'll tell you OK, it could also tell you that the life is low, which would be L0. The next diagnostic mode we're going to enter in is the fourth press. This is the transmission health monitor, TM for transmission health. It reads OK, so we're good to go. If you see L0 or any other codes, you better write them down because they're not normal. The last mode that we enter into by pressing again is the diagnostic memory mode. In this case, the diagnostic code memory one is blank, and that's good. If you saw something following up after the D1 position, you would want to copy the codes down, and it might read something, for example, P, then 07, then 22. So you'd have a diagnostic memory recorded as P0722. You'd copy that down and give it to your mechanic 
or just take it to your mechanic and, and they'll know what to do. But in this case, I am good to go. I have no memory faults and I just simply press neutral again and we're back into the normal transmission mode and now I can release my service brake and we're all set to get on the road. So we're all done, but I do a last minute double check to make sure that I've got everything buttoned up nice and neatly. Make sure oil caps are back on, dipsticks are locked in, final check. I greatly appreciate everybody who's subscribing and I also appreciate all of you who are giving me suggestions, tips and compliments. So keep them coming. I'm loving the opportunity to share the knowledge and have a community to share with you to help you learn and be more comfortable and enjoy your RVing life. So until next time, safe travels. Thanks for watching.